Researchers who study infectious diseases say another pandemic is inevitable. But many add that better tracking could limit future outbreaks. The New York Times looked at a program at Colorado Mesa University that uses a sophisticated system to track COVID-19 symptom symptoms and cases. It also monitors the spread of new variants. For more on this, I want to bring in a doctor who helped to develop that system. Dr. Paris Sabedi is a com computational geneticist. She is also a professor in the Department of Immunology and Infectious Disease at Harvard's T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Dr. Sabedi, thank you for being here. Tell us about the system that you helped set up for Colorado Mesa University to track the coronavirus. How does it work? Um, yeah, I mean, it, I think and by now, a lot of people have become very comfortable with this idea of technologies for contact tracing, tracking, and tracing. We had actually become really interested in it during the mumps outbreak that happened in, at Harvard University and through Boston in 2016 and 17. So we developed mobile applications that allow individuals to put in symptoms, to put in contacts, to share information in real time about infections and try to basically work together to figure out what's going on. Um, and then a dashboard that goes with it that's, you know, that is what um, people might expect to see for a dashboard where you can see things at high level, real time, uh, all the different pieces uh, of what's going on as far as testing, where cases are happening in different dorms and locations, and then going further into that of really bringing in the sequencing data as well to be able to capture how cases are moving through campuses. Um, and we, we used a whole lot of different pieces simultaneously, including wastewater testing, sequencing, diagnostics, um, kind of information gathering from all points. And Dr. Sabetti, you also found that some students were not completely honest about reporting their symptoms. How much did that affect your tracking efforts? You know, I mean, I think that um, it is, yeah, people have to be comfortable to share information. And it's actually, it was impressive to us actually how much the students did share. But of course, there were times where um, people weren't completely forthcoming. And we had a couple of uh, backstops for that. Like, the example that was talked about in the article was that um, individuals, you know, had sort of said that they had a certain number of contacts and it was covered, but then we were doing wastewater testing where we're capturing um, uh, the sort of wastewater coming out of dorms and using that as a way of seeing if there's any other COVID present. We found, uh, we were able to identify five outbreaks that way. Um, and it was instances where, um, uh, you know, some of the information didn't match up, but that's why you have backstops and you want to kind of keep coming to the community and saying, hey, we're here on your side. There's a lot of reasons why people wouldn't be forthcoming with uh, anything that's think that thought of as the government or sort of administration, but we um, we were we went very very slowly over the course of the entire year to the point where the students really worked with us because they knew we were on their side. So, what did you learn about how virus tracking could help prevent future pandemics? Um, I mean, I think that uh, you know we we learned a lot about where asymptomatic testing is helpful and where it's limited. And uh, one one kind of big thing that we talked about a lot and then we ended up kind of going studying further is this idea that a lot of schools were really focused in on themselves, just testing uh, their own students kind of with blinders on on what was going on in the community. Um, and we always thought that wasn't the right approach, that it really is everyone is safe no one is safe until everyone is safe. And that if if colleges want to make a case for themselves and why they should kind of keep going in the middle of a pandemic, they should really open up and, and bring things to the larger community. And so one thing we 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 tested in, in the kind of in mo in our modeling and we're using that approach and what we're doing is to really reach out and to support testing in our communities. And and we found in multiple, you know, from multiple directions that the more you keep your neighbors safe, the more you keep um, yourself safe. And so the most you know, the, the best approach is actually the, the altruistic approach. Um, but, you know, that was an example. Another thing is just that wastewater testing is awesome and is really, really helpful uh, approach as well. Um, so there, there are a lot of different pieces. Um, but I think more than anything, it told us this is possible. This kind of collaborative uh, communication stream, everyone participating in being a disease detective is something that is possible if done really carefully and thoughtfully with the community. It's great to hear that there are ways that uh, researchers like yourself have learned how to mitigate the problems that might come from future pandemics from this one. Dr. Pradis Sabedi, thank you. Thank you.